Hey, uh, let's start real quick by just paying our respects to one of the, the all-time greats in our league, uh, Elgin Baylor, passing away. And just, you know, our league is where it is because of, of players from the past. And uh, he was an incredible man. Everything I've heard about him, he's an absolutely incredible uh, uh, basketball player. And, and you know, I met him a few times over the years and just – as nice as they come. So he will be missed and, and just a lot of love out for everything he's done for, for the rest of us that are, are living in the NBA now. Coach, this is Katie. Um, I have a couple questions for you. The first one I kind of wanted to ask what your thoughts, I know it's a small sample size, three games with Tyrese in that starting lineup. I wanted to know, first off, what you have, what you've liked about that and where you're struggling kind of with changes and, and, and kind of rotations and that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's been good in the, in the, the, the sample size we've seen, um, you know, one of the things that we had going earlier uh, for, for us in the season when he wasn't starting is if we got off to a, you know, we got off to a bad start, like we did in Philly, we, you know, we kind of, Tyrese was someone we could put in and, and try to change the, the flow up. So uh, having him out there in the starting lineup, we, we you know, we lose that part of his, uh, his ability, but um, you know, in, in, in two of the three games, uh, you know, we've been, we've been pretty, uh, pretty good with him out there. Okay. The second question is obviously with Marvin out, you're missing about nine points in the paint a game. Um, I know that kind of taking the ball out of De'Aaron's hand a little bit, his numbers have dropped in terms of paint scoring, and so have, have your guys' is on a whole as a team. How do you kind of make up for something that was really such a big part of your guys' offensive success? Yeah, well, you know, it's important that we, we keep the mentality of attacking uh, attacking the, the rim and getting in the paint to either score or kick out uh, for, for threes. And uh, losing Marvin in, in the size and his versatility and his skill set uh, definitely hurts that. Um, so, you know, we have to look to do it other ways now. And, uh, you know, we'll, there'll be smaller groups out there, which means there should be more spacing. Um, and, and we just have to make sure that, we, we, we continue uh, to stay in, in that aggressive attack mode, even though, uh, you know, we might be smaller now than we were uh, before Marvin's injury. Uh, Sean Cunningham. Hey, what's up, Luke? Um, just when you think about this week uh, and what kind of lies ahead with, you know, a trade deadline and you guys wrapping up this season-long six-game trip, I'm just kind of curious from your standpoint, just even though the last game was kind of a – you know, one you wouldn't want to look back on just how, what kind of improvements or progress have you seen from your, your club over this past uh, six game road trip? Uh, well, I think they've, I think we've done uh, a, a nice job of, of being pretty, pretty steady. Now the, the consistency hasn't, we, we keep talking about that and that's, you know, that won't change, it, you know, even, uh, you know, you look at great teams in the league right now, you know, Utah is talking about it too. So it's like, you're always striving to be uh, excellent and perfect, knowing that you won't ever really get there. So, um, but I do think as, as a group, for the most part on this trip, we've been, uh, we've been playing a, a pretty steady brand of, of basketball. It just hasn't happened for enough of the, the 48 minutes that we need Um to, to win the games that we lost, right? Uh, the, the, the Atlanta game got out to a great start in that first quarter uh, and then tailed off. In the uh, Charlotte game, we played pretty darn good for three quarters there and, and stalled out there. So uh, then we had a little more of that consistent, consistency through those next two in Washington and Boston, and we won. Um, so, it, it, you know, I, I like seeing what the group is doing. Uh, I'll continue to say we know we got a long way to go uh, but as long as I keep seeing improvement from the guys as a group and improvement from the individuals that make up that group, um, then I, then I know we'll be uh, we'll be in a good place going forward. Uh, James Ham. Luke, when you look at the matchup tonight, uh, you're you're basically pairing two young guard sets. Uh, just how fun is this going to be to watch? Uh, you know, two young and up and coming sets of guards that will probably really go at it tonight. Yeah, look, these guys are playing uh, at a high level right now. And, you know, Cleveland's gone through kind of similar to what we've gone through this year with a roller coaster with some nice winning streaks and some, 
some bad losing streaks and, and that's uh and when their 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 players are, are playing playing well like they have the last few games they're really a really good team and that's led by the the play of their guards and uh you know sexton watch you know sexton and fox are you know going to be competing i mean obviously it's a team thing but um you know these are the type of matchups that you know, we're focused on tonight's game, but from a bigger picture, you could see these, you know, these young core of guards going at each other for, you know, the next decade. Uh, Jason Jones. Hey, Luke. Just in terms of you guys and the pace, the way you've been playing over the course of the year, I think Tyrese has mentioned it. Can you guys play even faster? And if so, what do you have to do to get to a, where the pace is, is faster on offense and, and even on defense where you guys can pick it up more? Yeah, I mean, the biggest room for improvement right now for us as a group is on the defensive end. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. Um, as, as far as the offensive pace, it's been pretty good throughout throughout um, the season. Uh, you know, we can always – you can always look to, to, to get it – you know, push it a little faster and harder, and those are things that we talk about as a group. Um, but a lot of that will come with the defense getting better and actually getting stops and getting rebounds and deflections and, and things like that. So – uh, you know, the game of basketball all kind of is intertwined and goes, uh, you know, you, you know, it's that the defense is good. The offense is playing faster and, 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 and whatnot. So uh, we're looking to, to improve all that stuff, Jason. Uh, Jeff Phelps. Luke, welcome back to Cleveland. Good to see you. Thank you. I don't after, see you. After Good being back. in Los Angeles for all those years, what did it mean to you? What did it? What did it do to your career to finish up here? And what, what do you take out of that time, your recollections? I had a great time in Cleveland. Uh, I spent a year and a half here playing. Uh, the city was great. Um, the fans were great. It was, you know, a young Kyrie and a, a young Tristan and, and Dion. And then we had a bunch of vets on the bench. So uh, we didn't win a but We didn't win a ton, but we had a, we had a good time uh, kind of taking that role into, into the end of into the end of the year, and I got engaged to my wife out here in Cleveland. So we have fond, fond memories of this place. Uh, Andrew Gray. So to, be, to piggyback on that one just a bit, just about your time here in Cleveland, um, you mentioned uh, Kyrie Irving and Tristan Thompson and, and you playing with them, but you were more of a mentor to them. How important is that mentorship role, especially within a team um, that's young with a few uh, veterans sprinkled in? It's huge. Um, you know, I think that uh, I think the NBA has gotten away from it a little bit in in, uh, in recent years. You know, there was a time as you came in as a young player, you really didn't play much at all. And, and you kind of got taught the ropes by all the vets that were on the team. And, and the league has gone to a much younger place now. Um, so when, when you do have those type of veterans around and in the locker room that can still teach those valuable lessons of what young players are going to go through. Um, you know, I always relate it to the difference of like parents versus peers, like your coaches will tell you, but those are more your parents and, and the, the veterans are your peers that you're, you're more likely to listen to when you're a young player, when it comes to being smart about whether it's on court, off court, work habit, all those type of things. So it, it's definitely important to try to, to, to build a, build something uh, special. And then my last question. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead. Last question for a follow up. Um, you mentioned off the top this uh, your thoughts about the matchup between the and Fox as well as Colin Sexton. But what are you seeing specifically in the Cavs backcourt, including Darius Garland? Well, I'm just, the last part. What am I seeing specifically? Uh, what? Yeah, in the Cavs backcourt, the Cavs backcourt with Darius Garland and Colin Sexton. Well, the, yeah, they they're doing a great job. I mean, they 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 attack, they attack, they attack. Um, you know, they play with a, a competitive spirit that I think kind of is contagious. And I think it's really been brought, you know, e even even been enhanced that much more since they've added Allen to the mix where, um, you know, he can kind of anchor that behind them. So uh, they, they uh, you know, they, they're making some really nice strides here in, uh, in, in Cleveland. And a lot of it starts with those two guards. Jason Anderson. Hey, Luke, I um, wanted to ask you about Tyrese, uh, you know, had the injury and um, we've talked about, you know, kind of the schedule and, and the number of games he's played. But are there other things that he's kind of adjusting to now that 
defenses are, are learning him and adjusting and scouting for him? Um, what are the things that he needs to kind of work through to um, maybe get, you know, shooting percentages and, and things like that back up? Yeah, you know, I think it's a little bit of everything um, as far as, you know, it, that, that's how it works in this league. And that's why, you know, the, it, it, the, the path never goes straight up. It, 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 it's ups and downs. And, uh, you know, he already went through it a little bit earlier in the season where he had some really nice success early. And then, uh, you know, teams really adjusted how they were playing him and forcing him left. And he adapted to that. Uh, to where he started playing with the pick and roll a little bit better uh, and, and found himself in a really nice groove again. Uh, then he, you know, he gets hurt and you come back and you're on a minutes restriction. So you're dealing with a different type of rotation. And, uh, and, and as you continue to be a bigger part of a team, uh, you know, scattering reports will constantly change what they're doing to you. So all of that is part of the natural progress of a young player. Uh, things that they have to go through and get better, uh, you know, with Tyrese so, and, and how intelligent of a, of a player he is and how competitive he is. Um, you know, I'm excited to see him, you know, work through those things and continue to grow as a player. Okay, Thank you, sir.